Let's start with some good news today. Scientists are influential people. Believe it or not, but there is a lot of evidence for this claim. For example, more and more scientists are advising politicians, stakeholders from the industry, and other powerful people. But the same people often fear what science might have to say about a given issue. That's why they might try to manipulate scientists. They wouldn't do that if what scientists have to say didn't have any impact. Here's an example, and this story has been investigated in a lot of detail. It was thanks to some influential scientists that the tobacco industry was able to cloud everybody's judgment on the fact that smoking can cause lung cancer. Although one has to admit that those scientists were also influential because the tobacco industry made them influential. When, in the early 1950s, more and more scientific evidence was published that the increasing number of lung cancer cases was linked to smoking, tobacco industry executives panicked. But with the help of public relations specialists, they soon found a solution for their problem. They would support the views of a minority of scientists who were skeptical of the causal relationship between smoking and cancer. By doing so, they created a huge scientific controversy that wouldn't otherwise have existed. Whenever the question of the health risks of smoking came up, they would point to this controversy and state that there are so many uncertainties and the science isn't clear yet. With this strategy, the tobacco industry bought itself valuable time. New generations of smokers became addicted and regulatory interventions were delayed for decades. In the meantime, the tobacco industry earned billions, while many smokers died prematurely. And as if this were not tragic enough, what's even worse is that this strategy was picked up by others. Oil companies pay for assessments from scientists stating that fracking isn't harmful for the environment. Conservative foundations fund scientists who claim that global warming is not caused by humans. And certain think tanks support philosophers and sociologists whose work is in line with their political agenda. And what about the scientists? What is their part in this game of money, power, and influence? Well, the truth is that not all of these scientists act in bad faith. Some genuinely believe in what they are doing. And yet the fact that they rather than colleagues with different lines of research, get money, distorts the playing field. The results of studies sponsored by interest groups have been shown to be systematically skewed in their favor, a phenomenon that is called the funding effect. And that, of course, undermines society's trust in science. So how can scientists fix this? It might help to think about what conflict of interest means. Basically, it's always about loyalty. And what does loyalty mean in the world of science? To whom or what is a scientist loyal? Well, a scientist needs to be loyal to two things. To the search for truth and to basic ethical principles. Anything that might affect a scientist's loyalty to the search for truth and to basic ethical principles can cause a conflict of interest. If a scientist gets money from a corporation for an assessment and the results do not align with the corporation's agenda, the scientist's loyalty to the search for truth is in conflict with his loyalty to the company. But a conflict of interest is not always so easy to identify. It might just be a little bit of money given to a scientist with no visible strings attached. A scientist could, for example, be invited to a conference and a company pays for all the travel expenses, including a stay in a fancy hotel. But even something like this can affect a person's integrity. After all, it's natural to react with gratitude and to feel obliged when receiving a gift. Even if the money from the company didn't immediately affect the scientist's judgments, accepting it can be risky. If push comes to shove and there is a public controversy, the fact that the scientist has taken money from certain players might be used against her. And if the public finds out about something like this, it can lose trust in science. So, as a scientist, you should think twice before you accept contributions from any interest group. However, this is a very idealistic standard. In many countries, there's not enough public funding of research projects available, and scientists there might not have much of a choice. 
that can lead to really tough situations. In any case, this is not an issue that scientists should grapple with on their own. We need to have this debate in our institutions, in scientific associations, and also in the broader public. Where is the line between acceptable and unacceptable practices? And how can we protect science from being targeted by vested interests? Let's start talking about it.